Okay, so let's see how we can uh, make this concept more precise of how many samples or how many runs or simulations we need to do in order to have a good estimate of the uh, of a metric. So let us say that we want to look at some metric and uh, the metric is let's say the mean Q length and we want to estimate the mean Q length by running a large number of simulations and we want to know how many simulations to run. So the number of simulations is n simulations is equal to n okay and so you want to know what n is and what do we want well we know that each time we run the simulation we get a value x sub i so the ith time we run the simulation we get a value x sub i which is sort of the mean q length the mean q length for the ith run and from these x sub i's we estimate the sample mean and the sample mean is given by sigma xi by n and that we denote as xn bar and so we get a number out of this and uh, you know and obviously as we increase n more and more we like this sort of we hopefully it converges to a value uh, that is close to the true sample mean so we are assuming that all the xi's are drawn iid independent and identically distributed with from a true population from a population whose parameters are mu and sigma square which means the mean is mu and the variance is sigma square and so what we want is we sort of want the xn bar to be close to mu we want xn bar to be approximately equal to mu and to be more precise let us say that we write this value mu over here and we have some interval of length L around it. So this is going to be the length L around it. And so this is sort of uh, mu minus L over two, and this is mu plus L over two. And we want the probability that the sample mean uh, lies in absolute value less than or equal to L to be greater than one minus alpha where alpha is sort of a confidence bound, it's the bound. For example, if alpha is 5%, then what you're saying is that with 95% probability, with 90, you know, this, so the, the, uh, the, if you look at this, so 95% of the time, we're over here and here and here, outside this range, we're gonna be there less than or equal to 5% of the time. So 95% of the time, the, the value of uh, xn bar lies in this range. So xn bar lies within this interval of mu 95% uh, of the time. That's what we'd like to say. And we can just turn it around and draw a different figure, which is rather similar to the main figure. But what you're saying instead is here, we're going to center it at xn bar. And we're going to say that uh, there is some interval sort of L, uh, L by 2 on either side of it. And 95% of the time, mu lies in this range. So we, c we can interpret this absolute number as the probability that uh, mu minus xn less than or equal to L is greater than 1 minus alpha. And of course, because it's an absolute value, these two things are really the same. But here we are saying that if we know the sample mean xn bar, then we know that mu will lie around it with some good probability. So this, if this, if you can find the, uh, if you can somehow link N and L together, so these, if you can link these two things together, N and L together, then we know that given the value of L, given the value of alpha, we can find the N. And so we need to somehow know how does uh, Xn bar relate to mu? How does it look like? And for that, we'll need to turn to the central limit theorem, which is what I'm going to talk about next.